to the Vision Lab podcast in partnership with Nexon Creative. I'm your host, Ryan Cuffey, alongside my co-host, Mr. Ryan Mosley. The Vision Lab is the official growth mindset podcast for all visionaries worldwide, showing mad love to the cigar community. It's here in the lab where we focus on growth and exploring the developmental path of people's visions and dreams and how those dreams come into reality. Yo, I am super, super excited about this. It's been a long time coming. We in the building, son. You know, I'm, I'm I'm so amped up and ready to go. Hey, Mo, who do we have in the lab? Cuff, today's guest is a native of Bell Glade, Florida. He spent time in the NFL five years with uh, stops in Tampa, Washington, and Cleveland. He is the creator of the brand that we all love, Cigar Porn. Please welcome James Lee to the Vision Lab podcast. That's nice. That's nice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. What up? What up? What up? Good man, how are you? Hey man, we're so grateful, man. This is uh, it's a long time coming. Uh, we started off what season two or three. Uh, we had Brandon Williams uh, of Cigar Porn on. Now we have the founder of Cigar Porn uh, into the lab, man. And so we are certainly honored to have you, you know, here in the lab with us, brother. Yeah, I'm glad to be here. So let's just jump into it, right? So. First of all, you know the name is sexy, right? <laughs> cigar porn. How did that, you know, how does cigar porn come to be? It just honestly, uh, sitting back on Instagram back in the day, uh, posting cigars and hashtags. Like it, it was just, it was one of those things that just caught my eye and stood out to me. And uh, it's like, you can't honestly, walk by it and not say something. It just, it's one of those things just pop out to you. Yeah. So, uh, got with my graphic guy and it was like, man, I got this vision of creating this brand. And, uh, but I was like, I'm gonna switch it up a little bit because, you know, if you type in PRN, you go onto a porn site. <laughs> Which so many people still do, but, um, no, we try to find a way that we can get around that without going to the actual porn site. So we created the X. And so putting those two crossing cigars together, we created the X and it was like, boom, we in there. So Mo talked about it in your intro. I mean, obviously you spent some time in the league, but do you, do you have a background in, in fashion or apparel? No, no, I have a degree in early childhood development. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, I did, uh, no, I, not at all. This was kind of like, I hit it, and I hit it hard, and I just put it in the work. I did my research. I went to, I bought into, um, like, classes to learn how to get into the apparel business. I did that, little seminars and everything prior to selling anything. And that's that's crazy. So, and, and you guys have been around for a little over three years, right? Yeah. Okay, and so you you had this degree uh, in in early childhood, right? And then you you you've been in the league. You dove into, um, you know, creating this this brand and this apparel. Um, talk about some of the fundamental learnings that you had when when actually creating this brand. Well, just the process. I mean, like crazy enough, man. When I started off, I went and bought like. I was trying to be big on presentation. And so I bought all these <laughs> crazy stuff. I bought all these boxes. I put them together and I had I got my stamps made with cigar porn on it. And my first probably like 200 packages, I put it in this nice box, had a shirt and a cigar. And I would stamp all these packages. And I went to the post office and the lady was like, Is this cigars in there? I was like, Yeah. She's like, you can't ship those. And I was like, what do you mean? It's like, you can't ship them. So I literally had to take all these boxes, take them over to UPS, and we had to put them in bags individually, then put them in another box, and then ship them out. <laughs> and so then it's crazy enough, like doing that, 
man, people were charging, they were getting charged three, four dollars for shipping, and him, I'm paying nine, ten dollars for shipping. So I had a real quick life learn lesson, like I'm killing myself in the beginning. But it was good though. It was a, one of those learning curves. I was kind of like saving this question for like later on, but I feel like it's kind of like we're coming up on this part of it. Like, when did you know it was going to work, man? Like, like so you got a degree in early childhood development. You didn't set out to have a cigar clothing line, but you know, you had a, you had a light bulb moment. When did you say, all right, you know what? I'm going to put all, I'm going to put all my energy into this. Like, this is going to work. I was, man, I was just excited. It was, once I went to like a, a seminar, it was a three day seminar in Atlanta. And everybody was in there was talking about like motivation with getting money and how God has moved them. And cause they were in there talking about like, what's your purpose and who's your audience. And I was just like, if you like cigars, you like cigar porn. <laughs> everybody else had this big ass story about God changed them and they get better person and everybody going to get money. And this, I, I was like, I just like cigars and if you like cigars, you like cigar porn. And it was like, everybody was on board. But when I did, once I got everything rolling, man, I did like a 10 day pre-sale and I had 45 orders. And that's when I knew, I was like, oh, we got something going. So did you drop everything and say, this is, this is my focus, this is what I'm gonna focus on or did you, have to go through a couple of things and work, you know, working as a side hustle at first. Nah, you- honestly, so the, the crazy scenario about me was I was in Charlotte at the time when I first started, uh, just kind of doing all my research and stuff. And so I had a business there. So after I retired, I went and worked for Merrill Lynch for a year uh, through their um, financial advisor program. That didn't work out. So I, I bought a franchise where I took uh, sports enrichments into preschools and charter schools. So I did that for like a year and a half. And so I ended up moving back to Tampa and was basically gonna bring that same program back to, in Tampa also in the midst of buying cigar porn. And literally the first month of sales, I was like, I ain't doing that no more. It's over. <laughs> I, it was just, it was a no brainer for me. That's crazy. That's crazy. So I literally, I didn't go to one school in Tampa yet. <laughs> I want to, I want to rewind. All right. So you're at this conference or seminar or whatever, and you know, everybody's got the Holy spirit. They found their purpose. They're driven. And you said it, you kept it super simple, right? Yeah. You know, you like cigars, you like cigar porn. Um, as a entrepreneur, what type of mindset do you have to have um, to not only get a, a brand or a company and business off the ground, but what kind of mindset do you have to have to actually go out and win? I would say that's just my, that's my, it's always been my mindset. I mean, from football, it's like, I can't be defeated. Ain't nobody gonna outwork me. So that was a mindset I already had. And so coming into just putting it into Apparel, it's the same thing I did with my kids. And it was the same thing I put in here. So it was probably going in, doing all the research, finding out who had what. Uh, like I said, I did, the research for this was probably six months, six, seven months before I even sold the shirt. So like I said, I went and found this, this uh, seminar that was like how to make t-shirts and how to sell t-shirts. Paid like $500 for a seminar. I went in and just dived in. So I put in the work to be successful. It wasn't just like, oh, here we go. Even with my logo, I was very detailed for like a month and a half on what I really wanted. So having a mindset that when I'm going in, I'm going in the right way. There's no shortcuts. And we're gonna do everything by the books and we're gonna treat this as a business, not just like, oh, I got a t-shirt. So it wasn't like, oh, I'm gonna just be selling out the trunk and in the cigar lounge where I go in. Like, that's what really turned the favor of me not going to my schools and saying, hey, man, forget them kids. I ain't, I'm making money every morning when I wake up. 
I'm waking up the money. So it was going through that process and doing things the right way to understand like, we gonna win this. Yo, and you winning big, bro. I, I, I love it. I love I love everything that you're doing, man. Appreciate it. Yeah, when, it, when, it, when this is over with, like I'm sitting out in, 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 the, in, in the elements right now, cause we're going to place an order for a cigar porn hoodie or something for sure. No, it's happening. Yeah, it uh, is. Before we get a little bit, little bit further into it, I want to say uh, thanks to the people who helped take care of us, Cuz. Uh, obviously, at Weiner Brown and the family over at Blowing Smoke Cigar Lounge, the address is 215 West Kent Wisdom Road in Duncanville, Texas. Uh, visionaries, if you're anywhere in the southern part of DFW, make sure you get to Blowing Smoke Cigar Lounge. Crystal and Tim at Class A Vodka, we can't thank you guys enough for all your support. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the slogan is class in every glass. It is an amazing vodka. We wouldn't tell you if we didn't, if we didn't stand on the product. Um, and, and Cuff, I know you wanted to give a special shout out to the good folks at Dallas Leaf. Yeah, absolutely. Shout out to Dallas Leaf LLC. Right now, I've got the Dow, uh, the Bishop, excuse me, the Hamilton smoking on that. Outstanding stick. Look at the burn. You can look at the ash. Uh, really enjoying it. Hey, you guys keep doing your thing. Also, uh, to anybody that comes out to Dallas, man, hit them up. They've got a number of different things that they do from an entertainment uh, LLC as well as a foundation. So great group of folks, Ron. We, we, we love everything about Dallas and what you guys are doing. Uh, I got a question for you, James. Right. When you started, you know, going down this road, how soon was it before like your circle actually like took you serious? Cause you know, everyone, know, everyone knows somebody with a t-shirt line. Everybody knows somebody at Alma make hats, but when did you know like the people around you, like the people whose opinion that you actually value were taking you serious? Yeah, honestly, it took a minute. Like, uh, I don't know like detail to how, how long it was, but I know like, which is crazy though, know, that in my business prior to, I learned that those that were close to me, I had a guy tell me one time, it's like, actually my mentor, one of my mentors was like, uh, about how people that don't know you'll support you more than those that do. And so at the time, me not knowing exactly what he meant, I had guys that I knew that I needed that worked in top roles at preschools that I needed to get into and they didn't let me come in like gave me the runaround. And so once I started the business, that wasn't my focus. I already knew that it's not about who buys shirts that I know, it's the people that I don't know. And so coming to Tampa was like perfect because Cigar City and then we just have that revolving door in the cigar lounge. And so you have people come in each and every weekend and I'm just like one person, they see one person with it, they like, oh, I need that. I go to the trunk, boom, get it, give them a card. They go back to where they from and now they, they got a client forever. So I, I'm curious, James, um, how did you go about, you know, selecting the material, knowing the different uh, vendors and manufacturers that you wanted to engage with? Uh, if, I'm, if I'm starting off a business, an apparel uh, or clothing line, how, what advice can you give someone that's actually looking to, you know, start their own thing in terms of finding the right vendors, the apparel, CRM systems, whatever it is that you use? I would say a lot of that stuff I learned in that seminar that I went to because I didn't know nothing about the type of shirts and different things and just material wise. And um, once I got to Tampa, I just kind of I went in to probably about four or five uh, local print shops and sat down and just picked their brain on what type of, how they run a business because I needed somebody that was legit serious about what they were doing and willing to have me, my products in the right, in a, in a right time frame so I can get them shipped out. And so, yeah, I went through, ended up going through two different print companies, but Eventually from the, the the print, the seminar, that's where I knew what type of shirts. And then once I got with the right uh, printing company, us just having normal sit downs and talking about where I want to go and what kind of material I'm looking for. Then from there, we was on the go. With you like occupying the space that you do now, right? Like you, 
like I'm, I'm obviously you're still in a very much a, a growth setting right now as far as the brand goes, but you got your feet firmly planted on the ground. Like people know who you are. They know what you're all about. Right. What's the first thing you think about every morning when you wake up when in, in regard to the brand? Oh, I got to go get it. Period. I got to get people they shit out. I got to send them. Like, I don't want. So the biggest part of what I, the craziest thing about what happened to me early was I would get, so just say, as for this week, Friday, I'll put in my order. Well, it takes about seven business days for me to actually get that shirt back. And then all of a sudden, so if you order this week, you got a week and then probably a couple of days that will get it to you. So it'll be two, probably three weeks before you get a shirt. But then if you order, it, it was just a cycle of keep going and, and people started to email me and call me like, hey, I ain't got my shirt yet. And so as I sit back and order all this stuff off of Amazon and get it in a day or two, it's like, damn, why we love Amazon so much? So that made me invest in myself. And that's why I started off with like a thousand shirts. I said, man, I'm just gonna bust it. Give me a thousand. This is what I'm gonna have. And I'm gonna get people they shit in two to three days. So when I wake up in the morning, I, say, I gotta go get it. First, I gotta ship people they stuff out. Second, I gotta go to the lounge and see who, I got people calling me say, hey, I need such and such. So I'm gonna drop it off. Or I'm going to have a meeting with whoever. I'm going to pick up uh, shirts and stuff or whatever from my print company. So I have literally every day, it's on my calendar, what I have planned for the day. And I wake up and just say, hey, let's go get it. So you're on a first name basis now, the people at the post office, huh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah that's easy. <laughs> They know me. It's funny, like certain days, the ladies, what is what black lady like? She was like, oh, you're a little light today. <laughs> <laughs> I had no worry. I'm going to come back in a little two days. I'm going to come flood the whole thing up. So, because sometimes you know, I'm in there, I got 20 to 40 orders, and I'm like, all right, give me the big bin. So when I don't come in with the big men, she like, oh, you like the day. What's up with you? <laughs> uh, they be joking and stuff, but nah, yeah. Hey, James, you, you need to tell her, well, you need to go ahead and buy a couple of these. Oh, uh, they be, yeah, I don't, that's one thing that about me, man, I don't pressure nobody to do nothing. Like, and that's how the crazy part about with all my reps and stuff, man, that how that came about. That's one thing I do not, and I, that's, I'm, I'm not in the begging business. Like, if you want to fuck with me, you fuck with me. If you don't, that's cool. I'm not all that like, hey, man, I need to get a shirt. Like, but not, listen, when you want one, you come holler at me. I ain't in the business of like, nah, I'll give you another discount. And like, no, if you, when you're ready to buy, I'll let you, you come holler at me. I love that. Um, I know you just mentioned something. So you have an interesting kind of go-to-market strategy. You've got different uh, folks that are in regions or states right. that uh, that push the product for you, right? right? Can you kind of talk about how that all came to be and actually what that looks like? Oh, man, it's a beautiful thing because we're crushing the market in, in, in all these different states, different cities. And so, man, I was just... Brandon, I, Brandon is the one of the guys that I knew prior to starting my business. Brandon lived here in Tampa, and we used to kick it back in the day. And so, after buying a couple products, man, he was in Dallas. And I guess they were on his head about, hey, where you get that from? And so one day he came down and we chopped it up and was like, you know, hey, I want to help out. And that was just me and I was just grinding by myself, literally for like, probably like a year and like nine months. And once he came on, he started like to get the shirts, get them to people in Dallas. And then so you have just random people hit me up on Instagram, like, hey man, I'm gonna come to Tampa and smoke. And if I'm available, you know, I'll sit back and meet them, sit there, chop it up. And I became develop different friends with different people that I've never met before. And so first it was my man uh, with Don up in Atlanta. Don, 
Actually, I thought Don was here in, in Tampa so much, I thought he lived here. <laughs> That's how much he, he was at the lounge, but he was back and forth from Atlanta. And one day he came in the same thing. My man, Ryan, I didn't know Ryan. Ryan just called me up on Instagram. Like, hey man, I'm in the city for the weekend. Wanna get up with you, buy some stuff and let's grab a smoke. Now Ryan come to Tampa four or five times a year just to kick it with me. And so all these people started to come down and just randomly hit me or I run into them and we sit down and we chop it up and we develop a friendship. And next thing you know, they're like, they already buying all the products. So they're like, man, I love what you're doing. I want to help. And that's why I tell you, I, I never asked nobody to help me do nothing. It's people that seen my grind, they seen my work ethic, they have seen how I move. And so I take it as an honor to have those individuals after I got to know them and what type of person they were. Definitely, yeah, let's come and join the team. And that's been it. So how many different cities is Cigar Porn on in? As far as the reps? Right. Uh, we have uh, LA, Houston, Dallas, Atlanta, Orlando, uh, DC, uh, Tampa. Yeah, and that's it. And, and right now it's, it's really just you running everything and then you got kind of distribu distributed right. in other places. What does it look like in terms of you scaling the business? I mean, it looks well. I mean, it's, it's, it's just right from now on, it's just going up. Yeah. It, it's everybody doing their own thing, but it's we all in communication on a day-to-day -day basis and everybody's just rolling. We all on the same page. What other cities are you looking to kind of move into in 2021? Hey, the situation has to be right. I don't ask nobody for nothing. I can easily post on there like, hey, I'm looking for this city. I'm looking for that city. But then it's like, you got a hundred people coming at me, want to be on the team. And then it's like, man, what if I pick the one bad out of the apple, out of the group? That brings the brand down. So it's like, so many people reach out, but I'm like, all right, Talk to me. I don't know you. You don't know me. But yeah, you want to be a part of brand. Let's have a let's have a conversation. Let me know who you are. And so after just sitting back and talking with people, it's like I go with my gut, honestly. But over the phone, I'm not gonna just go over the phone. All my reps, they I done sat down with them, chopped it up. We done smoke. We done drink. And I know them person. Not on saying I know them person. I know them personally, but. I can get an understanding of who they are and how they carry themselves. Has there ever been a situation where somebody's reached out, say, yo, I want to get down with you, y'all meet up, and just the energy, the vibe, it ain't there? Nah, honestly, because everybody else has been like, at the same time, everybody's been like out of town, out of state. And so it's one of those things where it's like, yeah, we over the phone, but still, you can give me some bullshit over the phone. Like, I just need, I need to see you. I need to see how you carry yourself. I need to see how you move. And so, cause you coming into something that the train is already moving, but we ain't gonna bring no, just because we want somebody in, in New Mexico, we just gonna get anybody and put them out there and say, all right, you part of the team, no. I got to get a feel for you. I want to see what you like, how you move, how you how you talk, how you handle yourself. Because if it ain't right, then the whole brand fucked up. Yeah. Amen. So, um, to 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 continue the point, because what we're because now what we're talking about is is essentially you know guarding the brand with everything you are because you know obviously the, the brand the brand is everything right without the brand like everything else is kind of null and void right if you were given a, a piece of advice to one of our visionaries who are listening what is the one thing that you would what or one nugget you would give them when it comes to actually not necessarily starting a brand but protecting one yeah man um honestly man the crazy part about it is, um, 
I come from an area where like everybody wanted something. So as a player, I mean, you have cats come up to me in all forms of fashion, wanting this, wanting that, all coming to it. And they just kind of sit back and just listen. And people always end up killing themselves, basically. And I get so much of it, of people coming to me, talking, and I got two ways, I, I, I say two things. I say, don't talk too fast when I can't understand what you're saying. And don't tell me about no more, more money than I ever had, that I've seen. So in that form, for all your fast talkers and all that, like just sit there and just listen. Don't be quick to act, react off of everybody that come to try to create whatever with you. Because once you start, like if you got some dope, they gonna come and try to fuck with you. But don't, I don't jump on just anything. I mean, you're building a brand and you're doing very well. So, and you got a lot of wisdom. Um, you talked just now about patience and deciphering between, you know, who to vibe with, who not to vibe with, what it takes to protect your brand. And I think earlier you talked a little bit about having a mentor and that may have been in the education space. Right. Um, but did you, do you have, or have you ever had a mentor as it relates to building your brand and, and within the apparel industry? Yeah, I do have a uh, mentor here. Um, honestly, um, my guy Jaime, like he's he's been in the industry. He has his own lounge, um, and he's been very helpful for me. Not that he's he doesn't know like apparel; he just knows business, and he's just like like even like my first time. I never forget like what is this. 19, 18, no, it's 18. I wanted to go to IPCPR. And one of the reps is in his lounge, like, man, you need to go to IPCPR. Man, they're they gonna love you out there. You can get with the different uh, retailers, get your stuff in the shop. As soon as the rep left, he was like, don't you go, you're not ready. Really? Wow. It's like, what do you mean? He was like, you're not ready. They will kill you out there. And I sat down and talked the next year. And as I, from that conversation, that's when I kind of hit myself with, let me prepare myself to get ready. I got a year. And I started to make moves with my business to where I was like, okay, I get where you're coming from. And from there, the next year, I actually asked him again. <laughs> You think I'm ready now? He was like, "Yeah, go ahead." And it was a it was a great experience going out there, like seeing random people, like they walk around with the shirt, and so I go up to the fuck with them, like that. I like that shirt, and they don't know who I am. They just see me with a shirt too. So, but after talking to them, I tell them who I am, and then it's just all love. So I got a lot of love between the different reps the retailers, and we got a lot of business from that, getting them in different retailers across the world. And uh, it's just a, a beautiful thing. But yeah, I go I go holler at him probably like once every, once a month, once every other month. And we just, he don't like I said, he don't know the apparel business. We just sit back and we chop it up and I tell him like, okay, what am I doing? What I'm trying to do? And he's like, he gives me his opinion. So would you say that, that for anyone, whether they are starting a business or, or not, like it, the value, there's a lot of value in having a, a mentor and someone that- yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I've had a mentor when I was playing football. I had a mentor when I was at Merrill Lynch. I've had a mentor when I was at had End Zone and they've all been different people. It ain't been the same people. So definitely you got to have somebody in your corner that will be honest to you and respect what you're doing, but give you, give you truth. That's what's up. What's the hardest lesson you've learned in, in this journey? Like we don't believe in like losses, but we believe in lessons. And what's the hardest one you've had to learn so far? Um, 
Honestly, just that everybody world ain't born. Like everybody come up to you and say, like, it's crazy how even just sitting back with different reps and or people that are saying they're gonna do something for you or with you or whatever it may be, and they don't come through. Sit back and talk your ear off about something, and just like that's what I say. Now it's just it's me just being patient and listening and understanding. And right now, like I know where my vision is and where I want to go and where I want to be. So I just sit back and listen. But a lot of people can just talk. It's crazy. Like we sit in this lounge and you just run their mouth about what this is and this and that. And it's like, you come to find out, man, that ain't true, bro. And you ain't going to do what you say you're doing. <laughs> um, a lot of slick talkers out there. That's the lesson. Like, a lot of cats just running their mouth. So you said the buzzword, vision, right? Yeah. For, for cigar porn. And, and James Lee, right? Like, what is your vision? Take over the world. Say that one more time. Take over the world. <laughs> Like, honestly, if I want you decide that you can go and smoke a cigar and leave your house, your ass need to have a cigar porn shirt on. Yeah, I, I love the simplicity of it all. I think one of the beauties of what you got going is, is that, yeah, you put a lot of thought and hard work and you plan in the details on stuff. And anybody who sees the clothes that you guys come out with, like there's details in it. Right. But at the same time, like your mission is super simple. And I think that's why you've been so successful so quickly because yeah. it's a very defined road. Like there's no, not a lot of twists and turns. Like I'm going from A to B, that's it. Simple. Like a lot of people make the things difficult than, than, than they are. Like everything's real simple. Like you want to smoke a cigar, you cut it, you light it, you just smoke. But guess what? Motherfuckers want to dip it. They want to chew on it first, then cut it. They want to do our play and blow, blow it and all this. Man, it's simple. You try to, you making it difficult. <laughs> you know what's interesting, James? You seem to have like an old soul. Were you influenced? Uh, like, who's been some of your greater influencers? And I'm wondering. I, I'm yeah, thinking, I can see I'm my, 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 I see my dad work hard. He busts his ass. My mom worked hard. I mean, I grew up a lot around my grandparents. I'm the only child, so I just know I seen my mom and my people just hustle. And so when I decided that football or what, what I wanted to do, it wasn't nothing gonna stop me. And so the same shit, like I say, it's the same mindset. You know, we don't just, it ain't, you give, you put your mind to it, what you want, then you go get it, period. I don't let your friends, your wife, and your, your girlfriend get all in here. Like, if it's something you want to do, you go get it. How, uh, how, how, how have your your former teammates reacted to to what you got going on? The craziest shit, bro. So, with the shirt you got on, so I get I start the brand. I call. No, I'm talking about nothing but rappers and athletes. And love Instagram models. And I said, everybody, this porn shirt he got on. First shirt I came back, because honestly, when I went to the mentor at the uh, seminar, I had to do that from there. I kicked it with him for a little bit as far as helping me. And we were like, this going to be the kicker. So we created that shirt first. And probably like 50% of these cats was already still in the league. So... Everybody get the shirt. It was like, no, I can't wear this shirt. It says porn. <laughs> and I was like, fuck, man. And so <laughs> everybody that I sent it to, it was a few chicks wore it, but the majority of everybody, especially those that were active, they're like, man, I got a kid's foundation. Like, I can't be seeing being posted no picture with porn on it. So I just had to. Eventually, certain cats came around and was like, "Okay, now I can rock it." But um, oh, I get a lot of love from my my uh, my teammates and and uh, colleagues. 
I love it. Yeah, you you right about that. Yeah, if I got a kids foundation helping helping the underserved, yeah, I, whatnot, I can't walk around with a shirt that that looks like the word porn on it. That, that's probably not a good look. Listen, I, I understood because, like I said, I left a kid. I had a whole company that was catered to kids, and I was like, "Shit, man, we should have sell cigar porn." Fuck them kids. <laughs> <laughs> Like, we gotta get to this real money. The kids was good, it was fun, but nah, we finna get some money. Let's let's transition a little bit. So we've been dealing with the pandemic for over for right at about a year, a little over a year. Yeah. Um, how has the pandemic affected your business, if at all? None. This thing been crazy. Yeah. It's been nah, it's been truly a blessing. Like, man, what I used to do in a month. I would have, man, and it was crazy that I was trying to get to that point where I'd do at least two to three events a month to get those numbers up because I just want to get it in people's face. You see it, you're going to buy it, most likely. And so I love like events and you just get to meet people. And once it's that love, man, when you meet a person, in, uh, somebody in person, you get to chop it up, even if it's a minute or if it's five. It's that bond you have and you always got a client. And so we got to that point. I went to my last event was over at uh, Daytona Bike Week. And then they start to shut stuff down. And it's like mid-March, April came and May came and the numbers just start going up. And I was like, damn, I'm doing numbers when I was moving around. Running around like a chicken, but it's just been a blessing though, man. And we came out with that uh, blackout and man, we sold a lot in the weekend. No, all of it's hot. I mean, I, I, I've not seen one like line of or brand or clothes or whatever. Like I'm not seeing one that I hadn't liked. And you know, my wife will be like, look, you can't, you can't keep buying all these. So I need you to slow down. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just trying to create different things for for all different ways, man. You know, like I said, we started off with this. We broke it up with cigar. We broke it up with porn. Then we came with the big logo. Then you got the embroidery. So for those that can't wear the word porn, like it takes like it takes a special dude to wear porn on their chest because of the attention that you're going to get. Like some people can't accept that. Yeah. And some people like, because it, it's, it's just going to happen. So we got the different versions for everybody and we try to create those avenues that everybody can actually represent and just show their passion that, hey, I love cigars. You know, I'm, I'm glad that you mentioned like that, that creativity in the different styles and, and having to kind of think outside of the box because it is, you know, kind of risque, right? right. Um, where do you get your creativity from? It's God, bro. <laughs> like, all this came to me literally just sit back. And once I got my mind on it, like, it was a go. Like, the I and the X was there from the jump. And so literally just like, as things go on, like people started coming like, hey man, I can't wear this to work, but I want to wear it. And I was like, okay, well, hell, pop one off and you got cigar. Put the logo here and say, they don't know what it is. It's just like, hey, it's just cigars. <laughs> you know. You got guys out here taking out. chances they livelihood with your shirts, man. Yeah, we might come out with one that just with this eye on it, with a cigar down the middle. I don't know. We just break it up. That's what, about the, what about the different color patterns you release? Because, I, because you know, we see Brandon, and from time to time, he's like, look, I only got X amount of these. Like, uh -huh. where, where did that come from? Because you, you you do a good job of making sure your merchandise is out there, but you, but you don't oversaturate things. Well, the thing about it is, when you look at it, like, you got so many... People that just love color black. Then you get into the different sororities and fraternities. So people wear things and, and coordinate it with what they like. If that's football, is that basketball or sports, the, the fraternity, uh, 
their high school team or their college team or whatever. And so you just try to play on those different colors and get people's attention with it. And they're like, hey, I like the Lakers and I'm gonna wear this purple and gold, but I, I like LSU, I'm gonna wear this purple and gold. Well, I'm a Q, I'm gonna wear this purple and gold. What's up, dog? <laughs> Sir. So it's just you playing on different people. Not is it playing, but you 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 catering to what they like. Right? What school you went to? Bandy, Theta Beta. So again, like he's gonna fucking rock to colors of Bandy, like a black and a gold, white and gold. No, nah, I ain't gonna do that. I'm gonna rock that purple and gold. Uh, but... well, and again, because you're cute, so you, that's too much alpha deal. So I, that's what I'm saying. So you're gonna have, and that's the thing, that's 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 prime example. So granted, like you'll have some people that's gonna play on the Vandy colors for real, but then the fact that you're cute, so he's not gonna play on that because they're like, oh, nigga, you're alpha. Yep. So. Again, I got him already. Purple and go. He gonna rock it all day long. All day. So, like this color they had all day. I went to Georgia. They gonna sit back and rock this all day long. So, and that's that's super. That's what I'm talking about. Like, what gave you that intuition? Like, how did you know? Man, I need to change up these color patterns based on fraternities, sororities, college, or favorite well, college. Honestly, first coming out, it was just simple, black and white, black and white. And honestly, when the clave came up uh, in New Orleans, I was like, man, and they had been, been asking me, like people like, no, you got to do some of these AKs asking for pink shirts, Delta's asking for red. And I'm like, man, be patient, man. Like Y'all don't know, I'm, I'm doing this by myself, man. Y'all just chill. And so... That was honestly, that was kind of the turning point for me. Um, I put out those purple and gold. I put out the jersey and I put out the regular t-shirt like a month prior to New Orleans. And man, it went nuts. And then talking to Brandon, Brandon the Kappa, he like, I'm like, okay, which color y'all Kappas really love? And we chopped it up. We like, oh, red and white and a little gold. Like, okay, cool. So, that's it. That was kind of like the start. And then like we got so many options, bro. Like, and you just drop it. See what and see what they like. Is the camo coming back anytime soon? The hoodie? The camo hoodie? Yeah. Yeah, man. I, I got a couple partners actually. Uh that's the funny thing when they drop stuff, like old and then like this year I I, I um I kind of had just the purple red the black the big crossing cigar and the blackout and so I wear the uh camo and dudes look at me like oh but what mine bro this came out last year oh I didn't see that and it had been my client for two three years and I'm like all right bro all right we're gonna get it for you so it's been a lot of people been asking me, so we'll definitely get it in, in there before it gets to get back warm. Is it is it really one of those things where, hey, look, if I drop it, you better get it while the getting's good and it's gone. And it, once it's gone, it's gone. Or will you resurrect something? Oh, man, you know, it, it's, it's I used to date like that. But at the end of the day, what I love is the biggest part of is giving people what they want. And that's been the biggest thing for me. It's like, you can't go into these other stores and go tell them what you want. Yeah. And I have people that always come up to me, man, like, hey, I need this color. Yeah, I want this color, I want that. If I hear more than five times, I'm like, nah, I gotta drop that. Because if five people tell me that they like in the same color, it's more than that. It's more than that, that those five that want it. Yeah. So. That's the thing what I, I do like about running this is I'm able to give people what they want. And that's what I give my, my reps the ability to do is if somebody in their city wants something, man, give it to them. I see you got your favorite beverage in the glass. 
when did you decide to get into glasses and all the other things? Like clothing is one thing, but now you got bar accessories and all kind of stuff. Like that's a different ball game, ain't it? Yeah, you know, well, after just the t-shirts, it became like, okay, how can we brand and get, get better with this? Like it started off with just t-shirts and hats. So how can we use and grab things that people use on a day-to-day -day basis? You smoking and you gonna drink. Let's get it to cancer set. And so that's what we're trying to do now is create different things that people use on a day to day basis and put the logo on it. And like I got some that came today. I I thought about it before, but I was like, uh, I don't know. I'm played with it. Like somebody came back to me for the second time, and I'm like, all right, let's try it out. We don't know until we put it out. It's off the wall. It's it's something that ain't got nothing to do with cigars, but you you need it when you need it. Yeah. No. <laughs> we gonna find out how much people need it. I'm gonna say, well, I guess we're gonna see here in a hot second, huh? So um, yeah, I can imagine. Huh? I said I can only imagine. Yeah, that's the thing, man. So, I mean, I tell you, it's an umbrella. Oh, okay. You don't need it till it start raining. Like I told my man, like, man, my wife put, I got two umbrellas in my car, but my wife put them in there. I didn't go and buy an umbrella. But we got a cigar point umbrella. I mean, who really needs an umbrella till it start raining? Yeah. I mean, you live in Tampa, you gotta have it. Right, so we'll see how it goes. And I love it because at the end of the day, it keeps your brand in front of the consumer at all at all times. Right, and that's what it's about. Um, so we're talking about you know start off with shirts and then hats, and it's crept into glasses and and other and other things, ashtrays, things like that. But but you know you've actually redefined yourself. How important is it for? anyone to learn how to actually redefine um, themselves to align with the vision and the purpose that they have in their life. Oh, it's huge. Because what you are, you are the brand. So it has to align for you to go in the right direction. You can't go one way and then the brand go in another. So you have to adjust and play that role into because again, you're the creator. So you got to create and go with the brand. So you've been killing it. You know, um, I would say that you're successful. Do you classify yourself as successful yet? No. And if you do, what is your definition of success? Oh, I, don't, I don't see myself as successful yet because like I feel honestly, I had a lot of work to do. Like when I say the goal is to take over the world, like that's like for real. And granted, we've sold a lot of products, but it's so many people. What I learned during this pandemic, I had so many first timers come to my site. And it's still so many people that are starting to get on. There's still those that are hitting CIGR, PORN and going to porn sites and getting mad like fucking niggas coming up with, with they having sex on their phone and they looking for a t-shirt. <laughs> so we got to continue to push that brand. And that's why in every post I post, it's just a lifestyle with the website under it to let you know, like it's, you need to go to this website to get this. So no, I don't feel like I'm successful yet. Like I just, it's so much work to still be done. It's so many more reps to be on the team. It's so many more people that has to have at least a hat on their head or a t-shirt. Like, no, we're not done yet. Well, I think, have we reached that time yet, Cup? Yes, sir. We have reached the time in the show, James, where we're landing the plane. It is uh, sponsored by the good folks at Grand Brulot Cognac. Thank you to the good folks, uh, Francisco, the owner, 
our good buddy Jameson uh, over at the Lovers team, everybody involved in our partnership. We appreciate you guys. We look forward to big things in the very, very near future. Uh, I had a great conversation with Jameson today. It's a small world, James, I'm telling you. Um, the question that we ask everybody on the show is you at a round table, and there are five other seats. Uh, you could have anybody at your table. The only caveat is that you can't have Jesus or whatever higher power you believe in at your table. But dead or alive, who are the five other people you want at your table? Five people. All right. Uh, give me MJ, Michael Jordan. Give me Tiger Woods. Give me um, I put Rick Ross in there. Uh, Rose. Put me Denzel Washington. And what's that four? That's four. It is four. And I'll take the other goat, Brady. Okay. That's a nice table. That's a really good table. For sure. That's surrounding yourself with probably the best of the best. And me being a sports guy looking up to those cats, like that's that's a good table. That's a good conversation it's gonna be. It's gonna be good conversations. James, if you were a book, what would the title of your book be? It's just a lifestyle. Mm. He was ready for that one. That one right there came off too easy. <laughs> yeah, it was. All right, so we're going to land the plane here. I got two questions for, for you. But before uh, we get to that point, real quickly, how can our visionaries, if they've been hiding under a rock and they don't know about cigar porn, how can they get a hold of you? How can they buy their merchandise? How can they follow you on all of your social media? All social media, cigar porn, C I G A R P X R N. You can get all this good merchandise from cigarporn.com or you can reach out to one of my reps. But if you don't have time for it, you want to go on the site, www.cigarpxrn.com. Make sure you put the X. Yes. <laughs> yeah, make sure you put the X on there for real. You're going to have a little, I don't know, it might offset your time and you may get, <laughs> you know, do some other stuff. Don't be searching while you're in church either, in case you uh, put the wrong letter in there. Right. <laughs> um, we talked about it a little bit, though, um, before, but what is the long-term vision for cigar, cigar porn? I told you, take over the world. Take over the world. <laughs> That's it. Like, bro, we, we, it's, it's a simple plan, and everybody on board. We'll have everybody, one person thinking this, and one person, everybody locked in. Let's take over the world. And it's easy because the product speaks for itself. Yeah. All we doing is transforming. We just give it from one hand to the next. Here you go. Thank you. That's what's up. All right, man. Uh, it's certainly been an honor and a pleasure, team, to have you here yeah. in the lab. Uh, in case you didn't know, we do have a magical time machine. Okay. So, what would today's version? of James Lee, what advice would he be giving himself from five years ago? Five years ago. Uh, I just continue to trust your gut. That's it. Like, like I've been in different situations where just trust your gut. Like, and you'll never lead you wrong. And it never has. Love it, love it. Keeping it simple too. All right, we're gonna fast forward the clock five years from now, okay? So a little bit older. What advice is the older version of James? What advice is he giving you today? I keep it saying, I don't switch up a lot. Like it's, my st I'm simple life. Like my wife, I'm simple. Like I get all that nerves every day. Like I, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna grind it, I'm gonna get on her nerves. If she go cuss me out and get me pissed off, but that's what we—that's our love. So I—I'm—I'm—I'm I'm, I'm not—I don't switch up too much. I'm, I'm, and football taught me everything is consistent. Consistency is key. 
You know, you go outside of doing what's consistent, you fucked. That's right. Keeping it simple. Oh. I love it. I love it. And be consistent. Well, team, Mr. Lee, very much appreciate you jumping into the lab with us, man. It's been Thank awesome you. talking out with you. Big, big supporter, big fan of what you're doing, man. Keep Thank keep you. rocking, bro. Keep rocking. Thanks. Now, to all of our visionaries that are still tuning in, first and foremost, thank you very much for your love and support. Make sure that you subscribe to the Vision Lab podcast. If you like the content that you heard today, uh, please go ahead and hit that like button. Also hit the subscribe button and the bell notification in case you want to keep up with us. Remember, each one of our guests that jump into the lab are dropping nuggets of wisdom here on the trail of life. Ultimately, my friends, it's up to you to pick them up. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Ryan Mosley. My partner's name is Ryan Cuffey. The voice you've been listening to and the face you've been watching is James Lee, the creator of the most important cigar brand, Cigar Porn. Again, it's C-I-G-A-R-P-X-R-N. James, thank you so much for hopping into the lab with us. Thanks again to our sponsors. Uh, thank you. Blowing Smoke Cigar Lounge in Duncanville, Texas, Class A Vodka, Dallas Leaf LLC, and the good folks at, Brent, at Grand Brulot. And ladies and gentlemen, we'll see you next week in another great episode of the Vision Lab podcast. Pleasure. Blessings.